Hey, Bobby Manning here, and welcome to a one-on-one -on -one edition of the Gone Report. No video of this interview from practice here, an audio version of our one-on-one -on -one series here for uh, training camp with training camp signing Lamar Stevens, who I got a chance to talk to both down in New York uh, when he played well, uh, grabbing three offensive rebounds against the Knicks late in that game, and at practice on Saturday as well as conversation, a uh, deeper dive into his game with his trainer, Henry Wu Jr., uh, who's a former Division Three player, um, now training uh, NBA players like James Ennis when he played, Stevens, I believe he works with Mo Bamba as well. Uh, Kem Birch started his NBA training career. Uh, he's an Illinois native, originally from South Korea, and uh, has worked closely with Lamar Stevens going back to his time with the Cavaliers. Now, you know I loved the signing. Uh, big Stevens fan. His defense, legitimately one of uh, the more impactful on ball and in pick and roll coverages in the league. I'm still surprised the Celtics got him on a minimum, never mind a training camp deal here. And I've long expected, and I think, both Stevens and Wu feel that he's probably going to make this roster, especially now after the Drew Holiday trade cut down the roster by a spot, sending out two for one. So we get into a little bit of that. Uh, talk about Steven Summer going head to head with Kevin Durant, uh, his expectations and conversations with the team so far, as well as what he worked on over the summer to come back better this year. Still a developing shooter, guy who's really struggled on that aspect. Uh, and a big reason he probably became available to Boston, those shooting struggles. So he is coming off a career year with the Cavaliers who traded him uh, to the Spurs in that Max Struess sign and trade. Spurs released him. Uh, he became ineligible uh, to go back to Cleveland in that case, so he had to find a new team. And he had a couple options, but I uh, love the chance to win and replace guys like Grant Williams, Marcus Smart, and what they brought to the table in Boston. So here's a conversation with Lamar Stevens, followed by uh, conversation with his trainer, Henry Wu Jr. And uh, this is a one-on-one -on -one edition of the Garden Report. We'll have coverage of Tuesday's preseason game against the Knicks, uh, as well as another week of practice, week three of camp getting started. Uh, thanks for following along with us here on CLNS Media. And here is Lamar Stevens. Normally, I think in my past few years of playing uh, in the league and having us summers uh this is my first time i really made an emphasis to play uh in those leagues because you know sometimes like when you're in a role or you're trying to work on something you may not always get the reps that you want yeah. in an actual game so you know simulating those reps and you know just getting opportunities and see different defenses and, and just compete at a high level I think it was really important to me uh, just to take my next step. And what do they call it? The Philly ones called? Uh, the Danny Ruff Classic. So great LA. tournament, probably the best one in the country. Oh, uh, for real? Yeah, <laughs> I think so. And which one Which one was LA? Uh, the Drew League. Okay, so yeah. which one were you lined up against uh, Kevin Durant in? Oh, okay, so that was uh, LA. That, those are private runs. Okay. Yeah, so those are super private runs. Uh, they're hosted by uh, Alex Basil. Um, but yeah, I mean, those are just super private. I mean, Drake pulls up, like, yeah. uh, Devin Booker is there, Michael Porter Jr., Trey Young, um, I mean, Jalen Green. The list goes on, Chet Holmgren, the list goes on. Was that your first time you were able to be in that one? Yeah, yeah, it was my first time. So I played in that twice um, in, the, in this one week stint that I did in LA, so. How'd you get into it? Uh, just having relationships with, uh, some of the trainers that run it. Um, and yeah, just through that relationship, they invited me. They said I was able to play. Did you get to meet Drake? <laughs> nah, <laughs> I didn't get to meet Drake. My my brother did, which was cool. So, <laughs> But yeah, it was cool. What was that like for him? Uh, it was surreal for him. It was surreal. Like, he came and sat right behind him. So it was just like, 
yeah, it was just a cool moment. So what was that environment like for you? Obviously you got to, you know, defend uh, Durant. I know Henry said you held him to a couple misses in a row. Yeah. Like, what, what kind of benefit does that do for you? And even just being in that environment where you have such, like, big stars watching you and it's just, you know, kind of that environment. Um, yeah, I mean, it's cool. It's just like, you know, playing in a big game in L.A. or, you know, Miami. Um, it's the same type of vibe. So uh, just go, go. Getting, getting the chance to compete against a high-level talent, something I, uh, you know, you just don't take for granted. You just, you know, you want to put your best foot forward and, and learn what you can and, and, and just be a sponge in those opportunities while competing. Um, but yeah, it was a good, it was a cool opportunity. What makes you affect, I know every guy is different, but when you're going up against the Durant's of the world, Giannis's, the like highest level guys, yeah. what's kind of the key to slowing them down? Because you're not going to stop them every time, but yeah. for you, I would say uh, just, you know, it's different for both of them. Yeah. But for Durant in particular, I think just not allowing him to just get easy catches where he wants. And um, and also just making him just take tough tough shots that you're kind of anticipating yeah. um, with a really good contest. Sometimes that's not even enough. You know, he's, he's that good. But uh, just be, I think it starts with the catch and just not letting him get an easy catch. Um, and then uh, off of that, just making them shoot tough, anticipated shots with a really good contest, or you being really physical on him, so it's like he doesn't have the same balance that he would um, for a regular shot. If Giannis, uh, with Giannis, I think it's about kind of like cat and mouse him. Um, yeah. You know, not pressing up because you kind of want him to shoot, but not letting him feel super comfortable to drive straight down downhill. And also, just, uh, you gotta, you have to be you know, physical enough to withstand his strength um, and his speed. So I think that's something that, uh, that you know, my, I've, I've been able to do with my body, um, that I can take those bumps and still be able to recover and, and make it a contested shot. But, yeah, you can't let him get too close to the rim um, and just, you know, staying with him physically and taking them, those bumps and being able to stay with him. The CLNS Media Network is powered by FanDuel. Sign up at FanDuel.com slash Boston and get in on the action with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. When you place a $5 bet, that's $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. And so in camp so far, I know Henry talked a little bit about the screening game that you've been in here so far, getting adjusted to how this team screens. How would you describe it? Is it different than what you're used to? Like, is it something you have to learn, just where to set screens, how to set them, that whole yeah. thing? Yeah, this is, I mean, this is, uh, a lot of it is very new. Yeah. A lot of it is very new. Um, and just getting here a couple of days before training camp, um, it's definitely been a lot to, you know, just learn because everything we've done here is at a super detailed and high level, yeah. um, you know, attention. So, uh, they, the coaches have been great uh, with film and, and slowing things down and helping me through it. But, yeah, it's definitely a move through. And have you ever played the five? Henry said that to me, too, that, you know, we might see you at the five a little bit. I know it's not really positions like they used to be, but yeah. is that something you've ever done before? Um, I think I played the five a little bit with the Cavs, but for the most part, no, not really. I mean, I started a lot of games my second year at the two. Yeah. Started a lot of games last year at the three, a few at the four. Um, I've had like very few spot minutes at the five. Could uh, you yeah. see yourself doing that a little bit here? And For sure. I mean, I think that, you know, with my versatility, I can play, you know, two through five for a good stance. So, um, yeah, it's just, I definitely think that I can step into that role. And wh what's it been like building a relationship with Joe so far? Henry said you guys are kind of cut through the same cloth just in terms of your personalities. And, yeah. You know, what's it been like getting to know him and learning what he expects from you? Yeah, I mean, I mean, just from, you know, not even conversations, just viewing them in, in practice and how he goes after guys and, you know, just tries to pull the best out of him. He's, he's a fierce competitor and, like, you know, he's going to scratch and call and, and, and do what's needed to be done, do the dirty work that's needed to be done to uh, secure a win. And uh, I think I'm the same way. You know, I'm, I'm okay with Dabo on the floor. I'm okay with taking charges and, you know, just going for offensive rebounds and making an extra sprint to get a block or whatever. So um, I think we're definitely like made up from the same toughness mindset of like doing whatever it takes to get get wins. 
and um, Henry mentioned the junkyard dog chain too last year in Cleveland. Do you remember how many of those you won? No, I don't remember, <laughs> but I probably won first or second most. First or second most there. in the team. How yeah. did that start? I uh, started after my rookie year. Uh, I mean, me and the guys, you, like, we were underdogs for the whole year, so, uh, you know, I would start barking on the sideline, and it kind of just been a thing that we would do. Like, we would get win after win after win at the beginning of the season, and um, we would all just come in the, on the court barking at each other, like, saying, like, we're dogs, and, yeah. um, and just embracing that underdog role. And from there, uh, you know, the, the front office bought into that, and, you know, it, it went you know, widespread really through the entire organization. I know that uh, the, the marketing department uh, had it, their own chain for, yeah. like, you know, success that they had during the week or something like that. So, uh, yeah, it was really cool. It was really cool to be a part of. It's something that was cool for me to, you know, have a little imprint on. Um, but, yeah, it was, it, was, it was, that's how it started. And, yeah, that's where it is. Everything's good, man. I'm out here in Philly about to head to the game here in a couple hours. So I'm excited to uh, see it and see another preseason game and uh, see see Lamar play and kind of, kind of grow on what he's been doing. I'm, I'm definitely excited. Yeah, so, um, you know, tell me a little bit more about yourself. I, I obviously kind of looked at your background a little bit and, you know, some of your experience. But, um, you know, just kind of how you got into training. I know you played college basketball and, um, you know, did some coaching after that. What was kind of your journey to training? Yeah, I have a pretty crazy story. So I was uh, I was playing in, in college at the time at a Division three school, uh, Concordia, Chicago. And then one of my uh, close friends, Eric Green, played at Virginia Tech, uh, was playing overseas at the time uh, in Greece. And so uh, he invited me out just to go hang out with them. Usually when, he, when players play overseas, most of the American players kind of hang out together. So one of his teammates at the time was uh, Kemp Birch. So me, so when we were all out in Greece, me, Kem, and Eric got all really close. And the next season, I went back to college again. And Kem ended up playing for the Magic. And uh, so, like, during that year, Kem didn't really play much that year with the Magic. But he was, he was in the G League a lot. And I just was kind of – I was just kind of sending him film as, like, a favor just just, just to do it. And just kind of like, hey, like, this small thing, you should maybe do this or look at this. And after the season, um, he kind of asked me what I thought about training. And I was like, I don't do training. That's not something I've ever done. Like, I'm 21 years old. I'm a sophomore in college. Like, I've never trained – especially professional players ever. I've trained maybe middle school players. I was working at a YMCA. Like, I had no experience doing it at a high level. And, you know, he just really persisted that I'd try it and see if I was good at it. And, uh, yeah, he, and I give Kem a ton of credit because he gave me, you know, a bunch of a bunch of trust and uh, allowed me to kind of have a platform to, to grow and, and uh, end up working out really well. I ended up getting, pre- I ended up, uh, getting pretty good at training and, uh, you know, kind of as Kem, Kem's career took off. I was able to kind of add some more clients along the way. Uh, Grant Riller, James Ennis the uh, third, like kind of like my next kind of crop of clients. And uh, one, uh, they all, James and Grant end up having the same agent as Lamar. And Grant and Lamar kind of came out in that same. They, they were in, in, in the same draft class, so I was kind of connected through Grant uh, through to Lamar, and uh, yeah, ended up, ended up working out well. I mean, this is me and Lamar's second year together, and uh, it's been it's been a hell of a journey. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't trade it for the world. Yeah, and what was it like meeting Lamar for the first time and just getting to know his game a little bit and coming out of Penn State at the time? I remember, you know, his career there a little bit. Just where he was at with his game when you when you met him for the first time. So it's funny. I, I didn't. So his rookie year, I remember watching him, and I remember uh, his agent at the time was like, you know, "What do you think about training him?" And I was like, uh, "I don't know if Lamar's gonna make it." You know, like, that's the funny part. I just I wasn't a I wasn't a big believer in kind of what I saw in college as far as it translating to the NBA. Like he was heavy yeah. in, in, in the post and, and kind of played like, almost like a Charles Barkley type of player. Just you know, and it was. <laughs> It was very mid posting in. Like he was shooting three here and there, but his shot mechanics really didn't look great. And he wasn't like a elite level defender at Penn State. So I just kind of was like hard for me to see how that would translate to uh, to the NBA. And I remember watching. I was at Lamar's first ever game. It's funny he got in. He was playing the he's playing the Magic, and uh, he was guarding Terrence Ross at the time. And I was you know I saw him guard Terrence Ross. Kind of you know I've, I've never you know, I've watched Terrence Ross last couple of years dealing with Cam and Terrence Ross one of those guys at the time with the Magic was one of you know one of the most prolific bench scores in the NBA and I saw Lamar kind of just take him out the entire game 
you know, and, uh, you know, I, I ended up just keeping tabs on him the whole year. Shot really what didn't come along that year. I think he shot 16% from three, like 425. Uh, just, you know, the mechanics weren't there. But I saw, you know, promise as far as him being a 3 and D type wing, a slasher cutter. And I was like, you know, if this if this guy, you know, because the Cavs kind of really changed this whole game, turning from like that, that kind of like scoring low post, mid post wing to like a really like a defending wing. And so I was like, if this guy learns how to shoot in any capacity, you know, like there, there's a real chance he could be an NBA player. So I reached out to him kind of that, that next, that summer after his rookie year. And um, I remember we got in the gym that very first day and Lamar is a hell of a person. Like that's probably my favorite part about the guy. He's, he's the most amazing, humble person you ever meet. I remember sitting in the gym with him that day. He, sh- he just couldn't shoot. You know, we were, we were in there for two, three hours trying to make a couple hundred shots. You know, it just, it was just, uh, it was, it was, it was a long day of rebound, but, um, I'll give him a ton of credit and uh, he's came such a long way with the jump shot. Um, you know, I'm just, I'm super proud of him and, and just kind of see where he's grown. Cause oh, I tell him that's all the time. Like I, he even made, made me a, a believer, you know, like it was, his game has totally transformed since Penn state. And I give him a ton of credit to go from an undrafted guy that was on any mock drafts and kind of no one kind of viewed him as an NBA player to, you know, him going into his fourth year now as a guy that can really help a championship level team. So, With the busy fall season already in swing, you might be looking for wholesome, convenient meals for jam-packed days. Factor, America's number one ready-to-eat meal kit, can help you fuel up fast with chef-prepared, dietitian approved ready-to-eat meals delivered straight to your door. You'll save time, eat well, and stay on track with your healthy lifestyle. Too busy this fall to cook? But want to make sure you're eating well? With Factor, skip the extra trip to the grocery store and the chopping, prepping, and cleaning up too, while still getting the flavor and nutritional quality you need. Factor's fresh, never frozen meals are ready in just two minutes. So all you have to do is heat and enjoy, then get back to crushing your goals. Looking for calorie conscious options during the busy season? Try the delicious dietitian approved calorie smart meals with around uh, less than 550 calories per serving. This September, get Factor and enjoy eating well without the hassle. Simply choose your meals and enjoy fresh, flavor-packed meals delivered to your door. Ready in just two minutes. No prep, no mess. Head to factormeals.com slash newsfeed50 and use code newsfeed50 to get 50% off. That's code newsfeed50 at factormeals.com slash newsfeed50 to get 50% off. Yeah, what do you think was the key to him making you a believer and, and you know, just him making in the lead despite the doubts you had? I think the first thing that came to mind was the defense. You know, the yeah. the defense was, was definitely kind of where it all started. You know, he, he, he to me, and I, I try not to be biased, but not even just based on numbers or or uh, or even just analytics, kind of just on the eye test. I've, I've seen Lamar guard the best players in the world at an extremely high level, all different types, you know, from the Giannis's to Kevin Durant. Luka Doncic, like he, he has guarded these guys the best he possibly can at an extremely high level. And I remember this summer we actually had one of those pickup runs uh, with Kevin Durant. And I watched him, you know, again, you're not stopping Kevin Durant, but he made it as hard as he possibly Kevin Durant was four or five times straight, you know, and, and, and Lamar was guarding him the best he possibly could, you know. So I, I've seen this guy, Lamar, and that's kind of what really stood out to me was like his ability to really pick guys out of, out of an NBA game. Like he has to work on sometimes not fouling too much because he's so physical. But he just makes it extremely hard on guys, especially the, the best players in the world, to to play well, you know. And I think guys like that, you know, there's not many of them on the NBA. Like, to me, the top 10 on-ball defender in the NBA, he has some work to do off the ball. You know, sometimes he kind of can lose sight of his guy and, and things like that. But as far as, like, just guarding the ball one-on-one in isolation and navigating pick and rolls and – there's, there's, I can't name 10 to 15 guys in the NBA. Just we're talking about even in the in the level of Kawhi Leonard, like that are better than Lamar. You know, that that kind of stood out to me the most. And then from a offensive side, like Lamar is the hardest working guy. You know, in, in my clientele list. You know, and it, and I've had some really hard working guys. Like this day, you know, we're we're literally in the gym last night. You know, down here in Philly, he's been working on his jump shot. Like he, I think that's kind of why he's he, he's made the the improvement with the three point shooting. You know, I think. This guy, he works tirelessly. You know, he puts in hours and hours and hours, and he's such a precise worker. And he came a long way with his mechanic, his form, and um, you know, he's he's really improved. And then one thing about him, he, he's never never gets comfortable. You know, he's one of those guys that always wants to continue to stay in the gym and 
he has real love for the game. And I think stuff like that is underrated sometimes to guys, you know, guys who really crave improvement and guys who really want to get better. Those are the guys who end up getting better for the most part. So that, that was a big part too, just working with him that whole first year and second year league with Cleveland. Like we're in the gym, especially when he wasn't playing, you know, every night. Um, and I just saw the improvement and, and, and the amount of hours and time he's put into to really, especially with his three point shooting, just improve his shooting. And, you know, I think that just made me want to, you know, work harder for him, you know, like just seeing how much time and energy and effort you know, he's put into his jump shot and just his overall game as a whole. Um, it's, 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 man, if you, to me, just from the, just from the eye, it's just, it's evolved so much and he's grown so much. And, 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 the, and the crazy part about it is he's just kind of scratching the surface of kind of who he can be as a player. You know, some guys at 26, you know, 26 years old, you're kind of like, this kind of who he is. And I think it's because of his untapped potential and him kind of changing his entire game from college to the NBA, um, you know, the sky's the limit for him. How, how do you go? Yeah, you know, I've talked to so many people about how you go about tinkering with it, you know, a jump shot release and, right. you know, him, him and getting better with the three point shot there. What was your process of trying to help him improve in that area? Yeah, no. So the first thing we did was we sat down and we watched all 25 of those threes as rookie year. And we kind of showed that I think the biggest thing, nothing what he was doing with his form was consistent. You know, I try, I'm, I'm a big believer in not trying to change too much. You know, he had a good foundation, really good mid range shooter. You know, something he's even, you know, continuing to do now in the NBA, like really high level from the, from the 15th feet and out. So the form really didn't necessarily, as far as the shooting form, didn't need changes, but they were just small mechanics. Watch him now, like his rookie year, like he really uses guide hand too much. But to, to kind of push his shot and he, he never held his follow through, you know, and I think for guys who can't shoot, you know, you have to really give them some foundational habits that they can do every time. So they know, Hey, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. So we really work, we just focus on him, just holding his follow through, really getting his guide hand out of his shot, um, changing his shot pocket to where it's kind of coming straight up, straight up and down and not, not really across his face. And uh, he's worked tirelessly at it, you know, it, and it's, uh, it's been great. You know, I give him a ton of credit and, you know, he really went from someone who I remember, like he just said, I was uncomfortable shooting three from I was so far. And like, he just, you know, that adjustment form was so difficult to now to where it's like I was even another day. Like, I know he was one of five, but I, mean, I know it's 20%. He makes one more, he's 40%. You know, if I give him credit for even shooting five in a, in a, even in a preseason game, I can't yeah. I don't think he's ever shot five in any game in his career, to be honest, uh-huh. in the NBA. So, you know, him just being willing to shoot, shoot even after, you know, missing one or missing two and, you know, just having the confidence to keep stepping in and, and, uh, and shoot them. So, uh, you know, it, it wasn't too much as far as, like, changing the form. A lot, a lot of – I know he said be on, on the, the, the day you guys kind of interviewed him, just reps. Reps was a big thing for him. And just, you know, we, we made some small, you know, minor adjustments to his form and things like that. But a lot of it's just reps. And honestly, just building confidence in him and himself, you know, that he feels comfortable with this, you know, every time he's open, he let it fly. And you know, a lot of times, you know, like, the crazy thing about shooting is, like, if you shoot – 38% and you're missing 62% of your threes, you're a high level three point shooter. You know, yeah. sometimes making sure he understands like missing threes is going to be a part of the process too. You're not going to make every one and it's okay to miss. The biggest thing is always stepping into the next one with confidence. And some of it was just mental form, you know, just he'd never been a guy that, you know, could shoot threes, you know, so just kind of getting him to feel comfortable with that on his own. It really has nothing to do with, you know, form or habit or anything. It's just mentality. You know, he's, he's really grown into that and, uh, you know, I think people are going to, I think he's going to have another good year shooting this year. I uh, expect him to be anywhere from 35 and up, you know, so I, I think he's going to make another leap, you know, but I mean, I think he's definitely going to be better than what he was last year, like almost 32%. I think he's going to be, you know, higher. And he had a great summer, shot the ball extremely well, uh, shot the ball well in the pro-am games he's played. And uh, the form looks really good. I mean, just, you know, we, we broke down the film from the Knicks game. Like none of them, when I was one of five, but. You know, the form was good. They look confident and he's stepping right into them. It's not like his misses are all over the place and they're, and they're missing all bad and airballing. It's, you know, they're right there. So uh, give him credit for, for shooting them. And then, like I said, he's a worker. So <laughs> went back to the gym last night and they had an off, the sun's had an off day, went back to the gym last night and, and just continued to work on it. So, you know, he's going to, he's going to definitely gonna continue to grow in that area. How many does he usually put up in a session, three pointers? Well, in the summer, we'll, we'll, we'll work out twice a day. So he'll, he'll maybe make 500 in, in the summer a day. And we go five yeah. days a week, he's making, you know, you know, you know like 2,500 shots a week, maybe more, you know. And then, uh, like, yesterday, we only made, probably made 100, 150, like, at the light. We wanted to make sure we're not, you know, killing his body. It was only never going to be yeah. 30 minutes. But a lot of it was just making sure his form was precise and, 
um, just really just, you know, locking into to his habits the way, you know, to just come out today and again, just shoot him with confidence, you know. There really isn't going to be much, you know, as far uh, mechanical changes now. It's just going to be him just shooting with volume and shooting with confidence and trusting the work he's put in. So, um, yeah, no, it could be anywhere from, in the summertime, though. Definitely could be anywhere from 2,000 to 3,000 shot, made shots a week, you know. Yeah. Sometimes even goes in six days a week and doesn't take the weekend off. So, this guy is a tireless worker and you know, he, he, he wants to get better at it. And, he underst- and one thing about Lamar, too, he, he, he's very smart. He understands that that's what's going to keep him off the floor. You know, he like what he brings from intensity and defense and hustle aspect is what makes him an NBA player. And uh, but I think he understands that shooting is is, is the skill that's going to keep him on the floor. You know, especially especially with you know making the rotation this year and kind of how that how how important that is to him and, and and what he wants to bring to the Celtics. He understands he only can do that. You know, if he's if he's facing the floor and, and then just being a threat. You know, it's not about being a 40, 40 plus percent three point shooter. It's just if you're wide open and Tatum or one of those guys in double team and they kick it to you, you, know, you got to be able to at least just be a threat out there to just make one a game. You know, or even just give the idea that you can make one, so you can, then you can attack a closeout. You know, so yeah, yeah he's uh, yeah, I give him a ton of credit. Ever wish you could navigate the betting field with the confidence of a pro? Enter odds are. They're not a sports book but they're the sports betting advisor you always needed. It's like having a playbook for smarter bets right in your pocket. I've been absolutely loving the experience, and I think you will too, especially since Celtics All Access listeners get a 30-day free trial. Elevate your game day and join the smart betting revolution. Go get it at oddsr.com slash Celtics. That's oddsr.com slash Celtics. So what uh, what ended up leading him to the Celtics? I know he signed pretty pretty late in the off season with them, and it's, it's the training camp deal there. You know what made him feel like that was a good destination for him, good fit for him, even though you know nothing's guaranteed with this roster. Well, yeah, I think definitely that that workout he came into in uh, in I think it was early September, you know, really helped out with uh with with that. He got the best, uh, opportunity to sit down with Brad and. And they kind of talked about it with you guys, but just sitting down with Brad and just kind of hearing Brad's vision for him and kind of what they envisioned, you know, his role would be, you know, kind of that, that guy that comes in and kind of kind of fills that Marcus Smart, Grant Williams type of, of role. And, um, you know, so he felt really comfortable with, I think, his relationship with Brad. Like, he was there for three to three, four days and every day got an opportunity to sit down and talk with Brad and, and Brad kind of talk with him, kind of make sure that he would be a good fit for them. So I think that was the, that was the biggest thing. I think, you know, the contract really – which is more so kind of at the time um, before they made all these moves, you know, the Celtics wanted to, you know, provide flexibility for themselves, you know, so it was hard to give Lamar any like guaranteed money or, or, or give him anything like that because they wanted to make sure they have flexibility for any type of trade. You know, we had no idea that the Drew Holiday trade was going to happen when we agreed to the deal. So, um, you know, they, he just, you know, the Celtics want to have their flexibility and, and, and Lamar understands that. And, you know, he's always one of the type of guys that's really not about the contract and more about the opportunity. You know, he felt with the Celtics kind of needing that that defensive type of wing and, and, and defensive depth, um, and and kind of with with the rest of the options he had, like Boston was the one that showed the most interest as well, and then and they they kept you know, kind of tabs on him, and you know I think Lamar only fits best as well with a winning team. You know, he wouldn't look too good with a team that's not trying to win, and so I think what he brings sometimes doesn't show up in a box score. You know, you can kind of get caught up in a guy scoring four points. And you're like, oh man, he didn't play well. He had four points, but you kind of forget all the other things he does that don't show up in the box. And that's kind of who Lamar Stevens is as a, as a player. He just does a ton of things that impact winning, you know, at a high level, you know. And I think those things sometimes go unnoticed when you're not on a winning team, you know, because the stats don't pop out like they would on a losing team. So I think that 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 really was appealing to him as well, just being a part of a winning culture, a winning program. Uh, he came from that in Cleveland, kind of helped. He, he was a you don't even know, like he really. You know, I, they they kind of have a thing there with their with their chain, like a junkyard dog chain, you know. And he was the you know the whole reason why that even started. You yeah. know, he's the he's the epitome of, of of winning, and that's all he cares about. He doesn't care less about stats. I can't. I have to kind of hammer him on, like, hey, like, you know, you still got to score points, you know, like, but he doesn't. You know, that's just to, to his core. He doesn't care about any of that stuff. He just wants to be a guy that impacts winning. He wants to help, you know, the team win. That's all he cares about, and. Guys like that are invaluable to uh, to franchises that are trying to win championships like the Celtics. So, you know, he just felt like that was the best place for him, and I couldn't agree more. 
You feel so you're feeling pretty good about him making this roster. He's feeling pretty good about that. Yeah, I mean, I'm not I'm not his agent, and I don't really know the whole you know thing with him and Brad. But I, I think that the way kind of the, just from the outside looking at the roster structure, they have to carry 14 into the regular season. Um, I thought that the Robert Williams trade kind of solidified that spot for him because you know they kind of lost the roster spot that had to get filled. So they have to start the season with 14, and I think the way kind of the preseason is going the last couple games, and kind of how Joe has kind of used them is that he's definitely one of the top 14 players. And so even if they want to keep flexibility with that 15 spot, I don't think he would be in that conversation of the guy getting waived to the 15 spot. You know, yeah. so um, no, I, I would be very, very surprised if he gets waived. Um, you know, I definitely think he's going to not only make the team, but I think, you know, throughout the course of the season, play a big part um, whenever he's given the opportunity. You know, you know, I think he's a, he's a guy that Celtics, you know, in my opinion, definitely are gonna are gonna need and, and are gonna especially on, on nights that maybe Al doesn't play on back to back or maybe guys need rest or injuries happen, you know, it's a long season, guys get hurt. You know, and I think guys like Lamar are so valuable and I wouldn't be surprised if you saw, you know, down the line here when they kinda of get to the playoffs and being a critical part of that, you know, eight, eight, eight man rotation kind of Joe likes to play in the playoffs. So um, it's a long season. Uh, it's hard to fully predict what's going to go on, but I think Lamar's skill set, especially if the shooting kind of comes around, I think his versatility kind of Joe used him as well. Like he can kind of play the three, four, and five. And I don't think there's anyone else kind of in that wing, you know, in those wing spots, um, whether it's Fee or Shea or O'Shea or Delano or Sam, who can kind of play and guard multiple positions. You know, to me, it's about can you play multiple positions and then can you guard those multiple positions and I think that's kind of what separates the mark from the rest of the pack and you know, I think you know even you know as the season goes on he's going to continue to prove that to Joe and hopefully you know get, gain Joe's trust to kind of you know play him consistently night in and out. Yeah you mentioned the chain too in Cleveland is that something they gave out like after every game I kind of vaguely remember that. Yeah so they kind of give it they kind of give out a chain after every win so every win they okay. have they kind of give out like a, a, a like a, a chain to whoever kind of impacted winning the most that night. You know, whoever was like the junkyard dog of the day. It didn't necessarily have to be the guy that scored the most points, but kind of the guy who impacted winning. And that kind of all started from Lamar, you know. And, uh, you know, he kind of started that whole thing with just the guy that was, he would always like bark on the sideline. And they kind of, and I think the Cavs kind of embodied who Lamar Stevens was. And I think that's kind of how they improved so quickly, you know. Doesn't sometimes show up in the box score, but I think Lamar just, he was a leader. It's crazy. He was a, he was a third year guy last year. And if you listen to any kind of interviews about who he was, like every player and every coach kind of labeled Lamar as, as a, a locker room leader as well. And I think that, that kind of goes a long way with, you know, with, with the team trying to win. Um, so I think that was, that was great. Well, it was great as well. Yeah. And last one I got for you, which has been kind of like seeing him, you know, around the team and just, you know, the two games so far and overall kind of your impressions of him fitting in and, uh, even, you know, just kind of things you've heard out of practice of, you know, just him acclimating to these guys and, you know, showing what he's capable of so far. Yeah, no, it's definitely an adjustment, you know, just from my, from my eyes, definitely been an adjustment for him. You know, he's having to kind of learn a whole new system and he got there only a week before training camp. So he's trying to learn a whole entire system and language and kind of everything in, in a short amount of time. But I think uh, so far in the two preseason games, he's, he's played, he played okay. Uh, I think offensively, you know, he has to, some things he's still trying to figure out as far as his role. It's so much different than it is in Cleveland because he's playing so many different spots on the floor. You know, he wasn't used as much as a tech, like, for example, as a screener, you know, in, in Cleveland. He's kind of setting a bunch of ball screens now. And but overall, I think he's fitting great. I think, you know, just kind of, it's funny, I listen to what you guys say after every game. I think you guys are told you, I think he's going to look so much better playing with, you know, better talent. You know, I think right. it's gonna kind of, kind of, kind of make kind of what he does, you know, kind of pop. It's kind of hard to say because he really hasn't really got any minutes with those guys yet, so it's kind of really hard to say what his role would look like. But as far as him just fitting in and 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 just being a part of kind of what 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 the Celtics are looking for, like I thought, I think he's doing his role at an extremely high level. He's defending three, four, and five. He he allows the Celtics when he when uh, when he's on the floor to be switchable especially when he does play that, that, that center position to be switchable. He can guard multiple positions. And I think offensively, I think he's kind of shown me, at least for me, like he's being able to play off the dribble a lot more than he did in Cleveland. Like in Cleveland, he's more of a cutter, which I think he's still going to continue to do, and more of a spot-up guy. And I think, you know, so far in the two preseason games I saw, he's kind of played off the dribble, especially in New York, he played off the dribble a ton. You know, he was able to 
kind of showcase an improved handle, which I don't think he'll ever use, but I think it's just good to see. Um, and, and, and again, he's getting a ton of open open shots, and I, I think he's going to continue to shoot them and knock them down. And I think the great part about this is preseason, you know, so whether he makes or misses them, it kind of doesn't matter. You know, I think it's just him just kind of understanding where those shots are going to come from and his comfortability in the offense and kind of figuring out what, you know, where he's going to be so he can kind of just make sure he's working on that stuff in practice when he's working with me, when he's working on his own, with the coaching staff. And I think uh, so far I'm, I'm super happy with, you know, with what I've seen. Uh, I definitely think there's obviously room for improvement, especially offensively. You know, I think he could he would have made a three and then kind of shot the ball a little better last game because that close to 15 or 20 points. You know, which is kind of something we've been kind of harping on, which is him overall improving his offense. Um, but and overall, he's uh, he he loves Joe. He thinks him and Joe have a very similar personality. You know, guys who care about winning, guys who are all about the team. You kind of hear what Joe wants from from players. You know, like Lamar, toughness. You know, people who who are competitive, people who are about the team and about winning. And and I think that literally those those words kind of Joe says embodies Lamar. And I think Lamar kind of – Joe's obviously get that, get that same sediment to the team and practices. And Lamar and, and you know, really really likes Joe. And, you know, he I think, you know, Joe's going to really, you know, enjoy coaching Lamar. And I think he's going to be a big, big part of kind of – I think Lamar's going to be a big part of what the Celtics do, you know, both on and off the floor. You know, he's all about the team. And you can't have enough of those guys, you know, especially when you're trying to win games. We're just about the team. You know, so I'm super excited. And I think he's going to stick great. Yeah, looking forward to seeing it. Um, yeah, it, it'd be good. I, you know, you see all those second unit guys playing out there the last game, and it's like none of these guys play together, and it's just a little bit of a mess. Uh, but you know, it's a mess. You know, I do. Sure. I, I do. I do think uh, it'll be good to see him with some of the regular guys and see what that looks like. But I appreciate the time. Uh, great yeah, insight, sure. and I'm looking forward to meeting you. I, I'm sure you'll be up here Tuesday for the game, right? Yeah, yeah, I'd be, I, I'd, I'd definitely be there. I've been trying to come to all the games just to kind of just, it's so, it's so much different when you're watching a person to kind of get an evaluation of kind of how Lamar's doing versus kind of watching him back on video. And so it's kind of like, yeah. it's crazy on video. He actually always looks better than what he does in person. So I'm like, man, right. this wasn't, I thought in the next game, like in person, I was there. I was like, eh, he's not playing the best. And you kind of watch it back and it's like, he actually didn't play bad. You know, it's kind of just, he just didn't maybe make a couple shots that I thought he, he should have hit or, you know, maybe should have did a move maybe differently than what he did. But as far as like his overall floor game and kind of what he brought, you know, it's uh, it's played well. So kind of so I, I like going to the game to kind of get those different perspectives. And I think more importantly, it's just good to be there and kind of see all of his hard work kind of come to fruition. He puts like a told you before, he puts in so much time. So it's just kind of rewarding to go to the game and just see him just go out there and, and perform at a high level. Yeah, for sure. So uh, I'll see you up here on Tuesday. Again, appreciate the time. and uh, Absolutely. Uh, good luck. Thanks to Lamar Stevens for taking the time this week. Henry Wu for a great interview. Love talking to him, getting to know him a little bit on the phone. Uh, he'll be around the team a lot this year if Stevens ends up making it. We should know that within the next week or two here ahead of opening night. And... Of course, subscribe to CLNS Media, Celtics All Access for more coverage of Celtics Camp as the roster and rotations continue to develop. We had a hit on Jeff Van Gundy on the team here. You can check that out, Celtics All Access from practice today. And until next time, this has been the Garn Report one-on-one edition. I'm Bobby Manning. Thanks for uh, continuing to support the coverage here as we begin the 2023-24 season. Look out for more of these interviews. It's going to be coming all season long along with some other new aspects of our coverage here. Uh, thanks again. And talk to you soon.